Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Baseball Plus. Very excited today to bring to you a new game to the channel, and that is this one right here, Sherco Grand Slam Baseball. The version I'm going to be talking about though today is the Plus version, the more updated version of the game. There you have the classic version, and then you have this one, the Sherco Plus baseball or Sherco Plus version of the game. So, excuse me, let's take a look at what you get with the game. First of all, the rule book, pretty extensive, is about 20 pages long, but very detailed out. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, they'll they'll be sure to answer them on the on their forums or, or Facebook page or whatever. I know I asked a few questions. Um, very quick to answer. So, and it's not, you know, there's a pretty good learning curve to the game. You can't just pick it up and pl start playing in 30 minutes. Uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of little things to learn. And there's still some things I don't know about the game, obviously. I, you know, I haven't had it that long. Um, so there's still some things I need to learn. But uh, you also get stadium charts. As you know, with Sherco Baseball, if you've heard anything about it, the driving force is this, the uh, playing field and the ability to position your fielders however you want to position them. Uh, and that comes with a, you know, you need to play it a few times to kind of figure out where you want to put your fielders. In addition, you get the stadium charts here. And it will, <clears throat> it gives you kind of some uh, stadium features of each field, first of all. And then you get the actual charts here, which basically this shows you how to set it up on this field, which we'll get to in a minute. So all your fields are here, at least from 2018. This is, you know, some of them, some people have some new stadiums. The Rangers have a new stadium, um, which that's not going to be in here. It's going to be their old stadium. But you can also create your own stadium or field if you would like. Uh, build your own stadium. And tells you how to do that. You can go to the website and find out some more info there. And so let's get into the teams. This is the way the teams come. This is the 2018 set. As you can tell right there, 2018 Rangers. You've got your players and they're all, all the stats and everything you need to know is lined out. There's no cards. And we'll get into some of this stuff in a little bit later. But they're front and back. And this could be a turn off to some people immediately. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of it. I'd rather have cards. And I know they talked about making some cards at one time uh, instead of doing this format. And I don't know if they ever finished that or not. I, I don't think so. I looked, last time I looked on the ASG website, uh, the cards were not available. So it was just. Uh, as best I could tell anyway. So all your teams, they look like this. And then you also get, oops, got one behind there. You've got your, uh, this is kind of cardstock material. It is cardstock material. Uh, you've got your players which you can position on the field if you want to use these. Your base runners. Base runners have different speeds. Three star, two star, one star, no star. Uh, if you're playing with wind direction, you can put this on the field to remind you of your wind direction. And this is your fence. So if you're adjusting, playing on a different field and you want to, well, you're going to need to use these to adjust the fence whatever it is for your field that you're playing on. These are your fielder ratings, fielding ratings. So if you want to put those next to your fielders to remind you, uh, you can do that. You have a baseball to track the baseball on the field. And again, some more you know, position players, 
and some more fence. But the, you know, I'm not really not real big on this because you know, like I said, it's just paper cardstock. If any little bump or if you drag a sleeve across, it's gonna you know move everything. So I want something a little more sturdy, substantial to place on the field. So for right now, I'm just using this field. This is the big field that they give you. It is kind of a, a average of all the fields put together. So I just play on this. So additionally, you get your charts. Runner on, or base is empty. Runner on first. I put these in some sleeves. They don't come like this. They're just, they're kind of card stock, pretty good card stock. Uh, but I put them in the sheet protectors to be able to flip them like a booklet you know it's just like uh, your some of your other games out there that have booklets runner on all your different positions or different uh, situations runner on first and second or on third base is empty bases loaded you got your hit and run you got your and then you have some additional charts here that you can use you count pickup uh, pick off chart steel chart automatic umpire uh, hit and run charts, error charts, injury charts, hit by pitch, base stealing injury chart, all that's here. You can also uh, create your own players. It shows you how to do that. Gives you an outline of how to create your own players. If you want to do that, I'm not really into that. Um, but it is an option now let's see here the main difference between the classic version and this this uh, Sherco plus version is the pitching gives you step by step on how to to, to use it it's really not that hard uh, once you get the hang of it uh, you have your bunt chart also which is right there but all that stuff I put in this uh, little my daughter's old notebook or, or a binder put all that stuff in there so let's uh, look at the field now alright so I've got the field set up ready to go um, as you can see I use pawns from another game instead of the little cardboard or not cardboard but card stock cutouts that they give you I just think they're a little more sturdy easier to maneuver around um, I've colored the top of this one white for the baseball and then these guys are black for the base runners. I've colored black on top. Uh, this is just kind of my standard little setup. I don't think that's really where my shortstop should be. I think I'm going to put him right there. Actually right there. Um, you got to kind of play with it figure out where you want to put them uh, that's just something you need to figure out on your own I guess there is kind of a standard setup this is just my my standard setup and it's probably pretty close to what they say but um, let's take a look at some scenarios here let's just go through a and a bat So Gardner is going to be up facing Cologne. Let's look at his numbers first. 11 to 13 is going to be his home run number. 14 15 is his triple number. Uh, not every batter is going to have a triple number. As you can see, Judge doesn't have one. Gregorius has one. His 22 would be his triple number. Uh, 14 to 24 is strikeouts, 11 to 14 strikeout, 15 to 24 is walk, 25 to 56 or 55 is a probable out. This is his probable hit number, so 56 and above is probable hit. As far as the pitchers go, uh, 11 to 12 would be his strikeout number, 13 to 26 is his walk number. If he, a wild pitch comes up, he does have a wild pitch rating. Control number is 52 or less. 
Uh, 55 and above is possible probable hit number. So we'll get in. We'll show you how this works right now. Uh, let's take Gardner versus Cologne. First thing you're going to do is roll and find out who's in control. You have his control number right here, 51 or less, and Cologne is in control. Well, it's not. It's a 65. So 65 puts Gardner in control. We'll roll again, and we get a 12. Now 12 is going to be a strikeout, actually. 11 to 14 is a strikeout. 15 to 24 is a walk. So 12 is a strikeout, but you're saying, oh, wait a minute, 11 to, 12, 11 to 13 is a home run. The way to get to that number is it has to be a probable hit first. So you would have to get, if we rolled again and we got a 50, 56, so 56 and above is a probable hit, then we would roll again and we we'll get a 12. Okay. That is possibly a home run, but it probably will be a home run. You would go to the probable hit chart, base is clear, look at 12, 12 to 25 is a ground ball 12 to 25. Now, if it's equal to or less than his home run number, which it is, 12 is less than 13, you're going to get a fly ball to 1227. If there's one out, you get 12 or 2222, which is another home run. But fly ball to 1227 because it's less than his home run number. Gardner's left handed, so we get down the left side first. 12, 27 is going to be all the way out there. 1227, and he gets off the. There it is, right there. So in this ballpark, it is way out. Now, if you're playing on a different ballpark, maybe not, but probably. I don't know that any ballpark is fence is going to reach all the way out there. Like I said, this is an average of all the stadiums. So that is way out of there. Home run for Gardner. That's how you would get that number. Uh, it has to be a probable hit first. But even though the batter's in control, he can still strike out, which he did. So let's do another one. Judge, 52. <laughs> Just outside of Cologne's control number of 51. So Judge is in control. <clears throat> and we get a 16. 16 is going to be a walk. 16 to 34 is a walk. Walk to Judge. So what Judge is on first. Let's just play with that. <clears throat> so we have a man on first. Now, do you want to play double play depth? Maybe bring your, your guys in a step. Closer in. Maybe shade the bag. I don't know. Um, I guess that's where I'm going to play. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think that's where I'll play for double play depth. Uh, we'll get to, hopefully we'll get into some fielding here. Cologne's in control, 16. We got Gregorius is up. 11 is a strikeout. So Gregorius strikes out, two down. Now you can back up, but let's say, let's go, let's say Gregorius uh, hits the ball. Because we need to do some fielding here. We've got runner on first. Probable out, let's say, let's say it's a 45. We'll see what happens. Well, no. That's an automatic pop out to the shortstop. Well, actually, if there's one out, it's a pop up to 313. We don't want that. We want a ground ball somewhere. Uh, let's say ground ball right here, 6-6. Six, six. It's a ground ball to 6-6. Six, six. If nobody's out, only plays on batter. If there's one out, which there is, it's a ground ball to shortstop. Which means it's right at the shortstop. He doesn't have to move. Uh, do we want that or not?
let's say it's a ground ball to 3 8 with right handed batter. He is plus one to fielder's arm if attempting a double play. So, ground ball to 3 8. He is going to be attempting a double play. He's a right hander. 3 8 is right there. It's right in front of the bag at third base third baseman so he's off and he's on the run to first um, third baseman is Beltre he's a nine now first thing you do on fielding is see if he can get better than a nine he's got nine spaces to field the ball and throw it the five is for fly balls or pop-ups, mainly in his case. He mean, it means he has five squares to move to get the pop-up or fly ball if it's an outfielder. Um, so he has a nine. Let's see if we can better that. You'll add them together. It's a three, so he doesn't get anything better than a nine, so he stick with the nine. Now, if he's turning a double play, whoever he's throwing it to, if he's less than a nine, you're going to use that number. So he's throwing it to, uh, to Odor at second base, who's an 8. So he's he is less, so you'd use an 8. I know it gets a little confusing, but hang in there. Um, so if we would have gotten better than a 9, it would have increased his 8. But uh, we didn't, so it's an 8. So meaning... He has one to get to the ball, two, three, four, five, six, to the second baseman. Odor's at second. Doesn't matter on his movement. You don't count those. And then, so he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the ball only gets there, nine, ten, eleven. We need to roll on eleven or twelve to turn the double play. If we would have rolled 11 or 12 and bumped that up, he did get plus one on his arm, so uh, it would have got there. So actually a 10, 11, or 12 would have, a 10 would have tied, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus one, they said on the arm. So 10 would have tied. We would, would have gone to the automatic umpire. 11 or 12 would have got him. Would have turned the double play. But it's going to be a... We're going to get Judge at second. And Gregorius will be safe at first. Now let's say... Let's do an outfield fly ball. Let's do a fly ball to um, well, let's do a ground ball. Ground ball to here. Center field 15. That's a 19-15 or 15-19, whoever the batter is. Stanton's up, so it'd be a 19-15. Ground ball. Center fielder is the shields he's a nine so it's a ground ball so you're going to use the nine first you're going to try to see if he can get something better than a nine and he does an 11 so he gets an 11 to use to get to the ball and throw it so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven you can go diagonal, however. So Stanton's obviously on with a single because the ball's right here and he's at first base. And Gregorius makes it into second because the ball didn't reach second base in 11 or less. If it would have reached the bag, all the way to the bag, then it would have been was it a tie? Was it did he beat him? Or so forth, so on and so forth. 
even a 12 when it got there. So it's obviously a single, but uh, that's as far as Gregorius is going to go because the ball's right here, and you would get another throw, you know, quote unquote another throw. The ball is coming in. It's kind of a stop action deal. This is where the runners runners are. This is where the ball is. So De Shields was able to get to it quickly, throw it in, and keep the runners at sec first and second. Because to get to third, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and De Shields is a nine minimum, that would beat anybody trying to get to third base by one, which would be an automatic out. So you're definitely not going to try for third. So you have runners at first and second. That's how that would work. Um, let's do another like single situation, or let's let's do one way out here. Let's say it's a, a let's say you get a ground ball, and it's way out here. It's a ground ball, but it's past the fence. What that means is the ball is going to ricochet off the fence however many squares into the stands it goes. So it's two squares in, so it's going to ricochet back to there. And on a ricochet, say it's right here, you're going to have to pick which fielder do you want to go get it. And they have to run to the fence and then back <laughs> to get to the ball. As if they were chasing it and the ball bounced off. You know, it's just an extra space or two. To get to the ball so let's say it's a uh, right let's say it's a uh, let's see one two three four five six seven one two three four five six so right fielder is <clears throat> chu he's an eight to get to a ground ball we need something better and we did we got a ten so he would go one two three four five six seven to get to the ball and then eight nine ten to there so there's the ball runners at first now does he want to try for second I think so because one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve he's gonna to have to roll a twelve just to tie the runner so he's gonna try for second Chu is going to throw. He gets a nine, which is not going to be make it there. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. So he's in there safely at second. Like I said, 10, 11, 12 would have been an automatic umpire. Would have been a very close play. So he would have had to have had had to have had rolled a 12 just to tie the runner. So a double for whoever that was. That would be how that works. Um, fielding's pretty cool. It does take some getting used to. Most of the time you're gonna know, okay, if it's a ground ball here to you know seven nine, it's an out. It's a ground ball to shortstop. You don't even need to field it, you don't don't need to count it out, you know. If he goes here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he's an eight. He beats him by one. It's an out. All your fielders are going to be eights or nines. You know, everything's an eight or a nine. Some have an S, meaning superior fielder, which will come into play on some charts. It'll say superior fielder. Follow the instructions. Um, trying to think. Let's see. Stealing. Do we want to go over stealing or bunts? Uh, you have the bunt chart. First thing, you know, if it's an obvious bunt situation, you're going to move your guys in. Now, the bunting really comes into play more when you're playing head-to-head -head with somebody. You know, they're, you're going to decide first where to play your fielders for the batter. Then they're going to tell you what they're going to do. So if you've positioned your fielders, then they come up and they say, I'm going to bunt. Well, if you didn't move them in, you can't move them in. So that's kind of a thing where you just have to use common sense. 
Is it a bunt situation? Is it an obvious bunt situation? You know, is is the line of the shields up with Odor's at first, and they need a run. There's nobody out. The shield's probably going to lay down a bunt. So you would move him in to, I think the farthest you can move him in is to, I think five. But it may be six. It may be six. Um, let's just say you move them in into there. Then you're going to look at, you're going to first roll on the count pickup chart. That's where the count pickup comes in. You'll roll the dice. You get a 12. So we'll look at the count pickup chart. If there's runner on first or second, you'll look here. An 11 to 12 is a 1-1 one, one count. Do you still want to bunt? Yeah, we're still going to bunt on a 1-1. One, one. So we go back to the bunt chart. Roll again, 25. We look on the bunt chart, 25. It's a grounder to 3-6, batter safe, unless first base or third base is in on 3-7 or 4-7 or closer. Okay, so maybe you can come in. Three seven. Well, he's obviously closer than seven because I put him at six. So batter is safe unless first base or third base is on three seven or four seven. It's a ground ball to three six. Three six is right here. If you're trying to turn two, you're going to roll one die and there's no minimum to get to the second base bag okay so he's gonna need balls hit right to him he doesn't have to move one two three four five he's gonna need a five or six to get the lead runner so it was a good bunt and he was playing in and if you're trying to get the batter you roll two dice and you subtract one from the arm, the eight or nine. So if you were trying to get the, the batter, which I think would be the safer play there, uh, he got an eight. Uh, see, Beltre's a nine. So you get the minimum nine, but it says subtract one. So he gets an eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gets the batter easily, but it is a good sack bunt. So that's how bunting would work. Let's go to base stealing. Base stealing. Let's look at, let's bring this back into play here. Because, now if you look on here, let's look at some of this stuff now that you know what some of these numbers mean. They have letters here. This is for the classic version. In the classic version, you would compare the pitcher's letter over here are pitchers with a batter's letter and you would get a number and then that would be the control number they've kind of eliminated that they've just gone with a control number for the pitchers so you're going to disregard these letters he's a B plus batter C plus C D plus B C plus unless it says something on the chart about it you don't really need those letters so for base for speed and everything, you look at these two asterisks here on Brett Gardner. That means he's a pretty fast runner. If they don't have an asterisk, they're just an average runner. Uh, Echeverria has got two. Most guys don't have anything. They're just average runners. Shane Robinson has two. Tyler Wade has one. Everybody else is just an average runner. So for stealing and then your catchers. Sanchez, you look at him, he's a minus one arm. So you're going to have to subtract one on the dice roll, I believe. 
And if it's a right-handed pitcher, see here's the steel charge. Pretty easy, pretty simple. You're going to roll the dice under the appropriate steel chart. If you're stealing second, or stealing third, stealing home, cross reference the roll with the speed of the runner. So if you got, here's your stars, your different runners, your, your averages be no stars, one star, two star, three star, four, four star guy, and then your dice roll. If you're stealing second and it's a right handed pitcher, add one to the dice. Again, if it's a 26, if it's dice rolls a 25, or let's say, you got to remember you're not just going like from 16 to 17, you're going 16 to 21. Uh, if attempting to steal third and left handed pitcher, add one to the dice. If, if they're not holding the runner, my bad. If it's not holding the runner, you add one. Um, catcher is going to subtract one. If he, you know, like Sanchez is a minus one. So you're going to subtract one, roll the dice, and that's it. Find out the result, cross-reference, adding or subtracting anything you need to, and that gets your um, steal. Sometimes you're going to have, like I said, if it's a tie, if the ball reaches there in the exact number, say he's an eight, and it gets there an eight, uh, then you're going to go to the automatic umpire, umpire chart whenever there's a tie. And you'll refer, here's your fielders. If he's a 9-4, 9-5 fielder, you'll look here. If it's an 8-4, 8-5 fielder, you'll look here. And then the different runners. Pretty uh, self-explanatory stuff. Um, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's not that difficult. You're first looking for your control. Then you're going to roll again, see if it's a probable hit, probable out, um, strikeout, walk, and uh, throwing the ball in. You know, if the ball is hit, let's say the ball's hit right here, right in front of the center fielder, drops in to ground ball. To center field 14 14 is what that would be 14 14 uh, center fielder is the shields again a nine so we roll to see do we get better than a nine no we got a six so he's got to stick with his nine one two three four five six seven eight nine he can't reach first base obviously so it's a single obviously it's not going to be able to it's Reach second base easily. He can't try for two. It's a solid single. Ball's hit here. It's an obvious, you know, ground ball hit right there in real life would be an obvious single. It's an obvious single. Um, if you guys have any questions or want to see a scenario, I'm going to play this game out on a different video because I think this one's getting pretty long right now uh, so there'll be some stuff come up that'll be different from here but yeah, I think you get the general idea how this game works uh, if you have any questions before I get the game out go ahead and post them below and I'll answer them best I can so that's gonna wrap this one up thank you guys for joining me be looking out for this game which will probably be the next video I put out. Until then, you guys, thank you for watching. Take care, and God bless.